Hey, this is Megan from Dad vs. Daughter Playthroughs. You're about to watch Dwiggy's Demos tutorial of Red 7. When you finish watching this, please check out our video playthrough of the game to see the rules in action. Thanks! Hi there! In today's episode of Dwiggy's Demos, we're going to be looking at a new game from Carl Chudik and Chris Seslick called Red 7. This is an excellent card game, uh, a very quick playing card game, where the players start with seven cards in their hand and they battle against each other to see who can be winning the game. I say who can be winning the game because the game changes over the course of the game and the rules change. This isn't Flux and it, this isn't a situation where you're playing one game and you think you're just about to win and then somebody changes the rules and ruins your entire strategy. This is a game where the rules change and the state of the game changes on every player's turn. And so you're constantly shifting your strategy. You can play a long-term strategy, but you have to look at the cards in your hand at the beginning of the game to decide the best way to play them so that you can ultimately be the winner of the game. So let's take a look at Red 7. So, as I mentioned earlier, Red 7 is a very simple game, uh, so it's a very simple game to teach, and it's a very simple game to learn, so this is going to be a very simple and quick video, hopefully. At the same time, it's a simple game, but it is also a complex game. It's a, it's a game worth learning because it has a lot of layers to it, and it takes a lot of time to master the strategy in the game, because even though you only have seven cards in your hand, and the game is relatively simple, you can play a game in five to ten minutes, even with four players there's a lot of layers of strategy here and learning how to play your hand to the best of your ability to make the most of it and to win uh, takes some time and, and so let me cover the overall mechanics of the game first and then I'll spend a little bit of time talking to you about how to play your cards and maybe give you a little, some little hints on strategy and then finally we'll talk about some of the advanced rules because the game actually has two different kinds of ways you can play it. You can play it the basic game or you can play with some advanced rules and there's several different advanced rules that you can add on to make the gameplay experience more complex. So let's start with the basic game. As I said earlier, each player starts the game with seven cards in their hand. The deck of cards, the entire deck, um, is made up of 49 cards of seven different colors. Here's the color reference guide that shows you the seven different colors in the game and as you'll see here each color has its own rule. That color is very important, the, the rule is very important because that's the rule that governs the game that you're playing when that, when that color is in play. And I'll get to that in a moment. So there's seven different colors and there are seven different uh, suits or seven different numbers in every color. The suits I guess are colors. So there are seven different numbers in each color. And you'll, as you'll see here in my starting hand, the numbers go from one to seven. In each color, you have the numbers one through seven. So there are 49 cards, numbers 1 through 7 in each color. So uh, each player starts with 7 cards in their hand, and then they start with one card face up on the table. That is called their palette. Your palette is basically your board. It is your cards in play. And it is the cards in play, your palette, that um, determines whether or not you're winning the game or losing the game. The object of the game is to be winning the game at the end of your hand and to be the last person standing. Now, why do I say that? So, at the, during your turn, you can play a card to your palette from your hand. So, you can take a card and play it face down into your palette. Or, you can discard a card into the canvas. And that's the canvas right there. Um, the, when you discard a card into the canvas, you're changing the rule of the game. Now, that's important because at the end of your turn, when, after you've taken the actions on your turn, you must be winning the game. That's right. You must be winning the game. You must be beating all the other players. So in this case, there are two players here. Um, so let me just show you how I would play my turn. This is a great example here. 
I might play this card right here. And then I would play this card here into the canvas. And then that would be my turn. You have two actions you can choose from on your turn. You can play a card to the palette. You can play a card, and you can play a card into the canvas, or discard a card into the canvas. And you can choose to do either of those things, or you can do both of them. But you can only do one of each. You can do, play one card and discard one card. And at the end of your turn, you must be winning the game. The rules of the game that you're playing depend on the card that's in the canvas. So in the, in the case of this card, this card says it's blue, and it says most different colors. So that is the rule. So when I discard this card... I'm changing the rule of the game to most different colors. And whoever has the most different colors in their palette is winning. And it's my turn, so I'm going to play a card that's causing me to win. So I played that card. Now I have two different colors in play in my palette. My opponent only has one, so I am winning the game. And that's I've accomplished what I need to do at the end of my turn, and now I pass to the next player. And so my opponent now must play a card into their palette, or discard a card to change the game, the game state. They can either change what's in play for them to cause them to be winning, or they can change the rules of the game and then change the game, change the game to a game that they are winning. So for example, they could play a card like this on their turn, and then they could say, then they could say I'm done. Now, if you look at the game state, we're, both playing, we're still playing the same game, most different colors, and I have two colors, and, or my opponent has two colors, and I have two colors. So whenever two players are tied for the lead in the, in the particular game, then you go to the tiebreakers. So let me show you the tiebreakers here. So whenever there's a tie, cards are ranked by number first. So first you look at the number, and the highest number is the winning, is the winning number. So if, uh, if in this case, this is a great example, in this case, we both have two cards, two different colors, so we're playing the game most different colors, and we both have two different colors in play. So now we, do, we have to do a tiebreaker. Who has the highest card in play? Well, that would be my opponent. My opponent has a six in play. He has the highest numbered card in play, so he's winning. Now, if I had a six in play as well, and I think I could do that. I could just show you this as an example. If I had a six in play, and we both have two colors, we're still tied, now we have to go to a tiebreaker, and we both have the same number, so that's when we use the colors. The colors are also ranked, and you can see again on the color reference guide, red is the highest color, and violet is the lowest color. So let's see here, my opponent has green. So my opponent has green, which is higher than indigo. I have an indigo six, he has a green six, so he is winning that, he wins the tiebreaker. So if this was the game state right here, my opponent would be winning. And then he could pass the turn to me. And it goes like that. So we, we go tur taking turns one at a time, and we decide using the cards in our hand, how can we win this game? So let's take this back here, and let's just say that this is what we had. So now I have this in my hand, and let's scooch this over here so you can see the board. So I have to decide, what, what can I do here? How can I play this? Well, I could do this. I could play most, we could still keep playing the same game, and I could play this. I can play this card. And now I'm winning the game because I have three different colors and my opponent has two. I don't have to change the, the rule of the game at all because the rule of the game is still most different colors and I'm still winning. So now I pass to my opponent and now it's his turn. And so we continue passing back and forth until one of us cannot win. We cannot make a play that will cause us to win the game. So either by discarding a card into our palette or by uh, or playing a card into our palette or discarding a card into the canvas, there's nothing we can do to, ch to make us winning. If we get to that point and we can't be winning the game at the end of our turn, then we fold. We just fold our cards and we're out of the round. In the case of a two-player game, if one player folds, then you win. And if there's more players, then you continue playing until all of the players have dropped out except for one, and the last player standing is the winner. So that's Red 7. It's very simple. Very simple mechanics. You just play cards into your palette, to um, increase your board state and to, and to increase your chances of winning. And then you have to react to what your opponents have done so that you can be winning the game that they, they've caused because they, they've changed the rules. So you, you need to be winning the game that, they're, that they've uh, changed the rules to. And if you decide, 
I, you know what, I can't play that game. I can't play most different colors. You could change the, the game by saying, I'm going to discard a card like this. You discard that card. The rule on, on the indigo card is most cards in a row. And now I have one, two, three cards in a row, and now I'm winning this game. So that's how you do it. You continue to adjust to the game state and the situation. You use the cards in your hand and the cards in your palette, and you're constantly trying to maneuver so that you can be the last person standing. So let's talk about some strategy things. Since it's such a simple game to learn, let's talk a little bit about strategy so you can get a little bit deeper into the game. So you'll notice here that what I've done is, is uh, I've changed the, the game to most cards in a row. Now my opponent, uh, that might not have been the best choice because my opponent could play a 7 or he could play a 4 and he would be tied with me. He would have three cards in a row and he would be, and he would be beating me on the tiebreaker because his cards are higher than mine. So it might not be smart for me to play that particular game, try to beat my opponent at that game. So I might have to look at my cards and say, what games can I play? What situations could I put myself in where I could be winning? And here's a great example. So I have two cards that are below a four, and I have this violet card here, and the, the rule here says most cards below four. So I could simply change the game to this, and now my opponent cannot just play one card and be winning the game. He's going to have to change the game to something totally different. He's going to have to change the game and shift to a different strategy in order to be winning. That's a good strategy. That's a good way to play is to kind of use your cards to the best of your ability so that you are giving yourself a higher chance of winning. You'll also notice that I played three different cards of three different colors, and they're all cards that are in a row. If you can do that, then... It, I'm, I'm winning two different games right now. I'm winning most cards in a row. I'm also winning most different colors. So if you can increase your, your board state or improve your board state by playing cards that help you to win multiple different kinds of games, then that's the best thing you can possibly do. And you want to play your cards in the order that, that benefits you the most. So you don't want to play your best card and your highest card and your your best strategy early, you have to play for a long game because they have cards, they're going to be adjusting, you're going to be adjusting back and forth, and so you have to kind of work for that long game so that when it gets down to one or two cards left in your hand, you still have options to be able to win. And it's very important to remember what the different rules are as well. Keep these rules in mind because your opponent could potentially have cards of all these different colors, so you have to set yourself up in a situation where you have options. So I mentioned that uh, I'm winning most different colors. I'm also winning most cards in a row. I'm also winning most cards below four. So I have lots of options. So if my opponents change the rules to that game, I'm going to be able to do well. Um, however, if one of my opponents changed the, the rules of the game to most of one number, I'm going to have a problem because I have all low cards, so I'm not going to win tiebreakers. And I also, um, I also don't have a bunch of cards of one number. So that's difficult. And I also don't have most of one color as well. So those are just some of the things you need to think about strategically when you're playing the, the game. Um, as I mentioned, it's a very simple game. So let's talk a little bit about the advanced rules here. So now that you've learned about the basic game, let me just talk to you a little bit about some of the advanced rules that you can play with to spice the game up a little bit, to add a little bit more flavor to it. Um, I'll be honest with you, I've only played with two of the advanced rules um, ever. Um, this game is actually very popular among my play group. We play this at lunch quite a bit. Um, I can bring this anytime and, and throw it on the table and I can find four people that will play it with me. Um, because it's a quick game, you can play multiple rounds of this game um, within a half an hour time frame. So uh, it's super popular just as it is, even in the basic form. Um, however, if you decide you want more complexity uh, or and you want to get more replayability out of it, you can add these advanced rules. So um, the most common advanced rule that we play with is the advanced discard rule. Um, so the advanced discard rule works like this. So if I have these cards in my hand and uh, I want to change the rule of the game, I might want to discard a card. So the advanced uh, discard rule says that if you discard a card that has a higher number than the number of cards that are in your palette, you can draw a card. So I could discard either one of these cards. So I could say most cards in a row. I could change the game here. 
I can discard this card. That's a six. I only have three cards here. So I've uh, met the conditions. I discarded, so I get to draw a card to replace. Drawing a card to replace a card is super helpful because having, the, having more cards in your hand allows you to adjust. Allows you to, to adjust to what your opponents are doing and lets you adjust to the change in game state because after each player's turn, there's going to be a change. They're going to be winning the game, and you're going to need to adjust. So having more cards in your hands gives you more options, and it ultimately will help you to win the game. The other advanced rule that our group plays with quite often is the advanced scoring rules. The scoring rules simply work like this. When the game is over and a winner has been declared, the winner takes the cards that caused him or her to win and takes them and sets them aside in a scoring pile. So, for example, if this were the end of the game and I had won this game, my opponent can't win, he can't play another card or can't discard another card, and I won, then uh, I'm winning the game most cards in a row. So I take all the cards that caused me to win, so that would be these three, and I set them aside, and I put them in a little scoring pile over here on the side, and, and that is my score. I will score that many points. So I will score, in this case, I'll score nine points. I'm going to set those aside and I'm trying to keep track of my score, and whoever at the end of the game, we're gonna continue playing round after round, so we'll take our cards, we'll throw them back in, uh, all the cards that were not set aside, we'll put them back together in the deck, we'll shuffle the deck, and start a new round. And we'll each get seven cards, we'll each get one card in our palette, and then we'll start a new round. And then after that round, the winner will take their cards and set them aside. And we just play through the entire deck. Um, that's the way that my group plays anyway. We play through the entire deck until the entire deck is exhausted, and then whoever has the most points in their score pile is the winner. Another way that you can play, the way they suggest in the rule book, is to play to a certain score. The rule book says, in the case of two players, you play to 40 points. Whoever has 40 points first is the winner. Three players, you play to 35 points, and four players, you play to 30 points. So you can just keep track of your score, kind of have a running score, maybe set your cards aside like this so that you can see your score here in your score pile um, and keep track of that. And once you get to the predetermined number, you're, you're declared the winner. So those are the advanced rules um, that our group plays with. Those are probably some of the more common ones that most people play with because they're very simple. The, the final advanced rules that you can play with are the advanced actions. And if you look on the back of the color reference guide, there's an icon reference guide. The icon reference guide will tell you what each of the icons on the card mean. So if I show you the cards here, you'll see that the numbers, the odd numbers, the ones, threes, and sevens, all have a symbol here in the upper right corner and in the lower left corner as well. And if you see that symbol, that symbol means that when you play this card to your palette, you get to take an action. And those actions are detailed here again on the reference guide. And I'll go through them one at a time. Um, the reference guide I have is actually for um, version 1.0 of the game. There are actually version 1.2 of the rules now available. And if you go to BoardGameGeek on the file section, you'll see... Um, that file there, it's a PDF you can download, and it details, it modifies these two rules. The rules for number card, uh, the number one, and the rules for number seven are slightly modified. So I'll go through those one at a time here. Um, the the uh, first one is for a one. So when you play a one, um, you can choose a card from another player's palette and place it on top of the draw deck. So you're basically stealing a card from them. That's very powerful. The change that the designers made is that it, you can only choose a player, you can only attack a player in this way, if that player has the same number or more cards than you do in your palette. So if they have less cards than you, in your, in the, if they have less cards in their palette than you do in your palette, you cannot choose them. So in this case, I played this one, I cannot choose my opponent, I cannot attack him because he has less cards than I do. Um, however, if he had the same number of cards, if he had that card in play, and I played this, then I could attack him. And so the attack lets me take a card and place it on top of the deck. And now he has lost a card in his palette. That's super powerful. So the action for a three, that's this little plus symbol here. What do you think that means? You're right. It means draw a card. When you play a three into your palette, you get to draw a card to replace it. So that would be, uh, you know, that's... That doesn't. That's similar to the action that you get with the discard rule we talked about earlier. But when you play this card in a palette, you get to draw a card. 
So let's talk about the five. The rule for a five is this little symbol right here. You get to play another card from your hand into your palette. That's what that little symbol there means. So if you play a five, let's say I played this five here into my palette, that allows me to play another card if I so choose. So I can play another card and increase my board position and then I can continue to play my turn and I can also discard if I wanted. So five lets you play an additional card to your palette. And finally, a seven. The seven lets you discard a card from your palette. Um, you get to choose, you actually get to choose. So this is one of those rules that changed. Um, when you play a seven to your palette, you have a choice. You can take a card from your palette and you can discard it. So you want, you could change the rule. So that might not be the best choice, but um, let's say this. So let's say I played this card here, then I could discard this card, and now I'm changing the rule to most different colors. I, that, that's a really useful thing to do late in the game when you don't have any cards left in your hand and you've got no other options. You can play a, five, uh, play a seven down into your palette, and then you can discard one of your cards in your palette to change the rule of the game. And now all of a sudden, you're winning the game uh, and you don't have any additional cards, you just shifted the, the game state. So that's one of the options. The other option when you play a seven is you can take a card from your palette and you can put it on top of the deck. To be honest, I'm not really sure why you would do that, but that is one of the options you can, you can take. So um, that's, how, uh, that's how those advanced actions work. The um, actions, that when you play all the odd numbered cards, um, when you play them to your palette, they give you an extra action. They let you do something special. And again, you can choose to use these actions or not. As I've said um, before, I use the basic game with those two little advanced rules, the, the draw rule and the scoring rule, um, the group that I play with. And there's probably 12 to 15 of us that know, to play, know how to play this game. We just enjoy the basic game because there's so much to do with it. Um, but if you choose to do those, the rules are very simple. Um, I encourage you to look at the icon reference guide here that comes with the game. And then uh, look online to see the adjustments that they made to the 1 and the 7 rule. So, that's Red 7. Um, I've shown you everything that you need to know how to play the game. I've even gone into some of the more advanced rules and the extra things you can add on to add complexity to the game. Um, I encourage you to get it on the table. Introduce it to your friends. You can teach it to just about anyone. They don't have to be a hardcore gamer to learn this game. It's very simple. You could play this game with your grandma or your grandpa or your neighbor down the street if you're over and they want to break out a deck of cards. Break out Red 7. Um, it's a very simple game, very, very quick to learn and, uh, and very quick to play. So um, give it a try. If you want to see a, a demo, a run-through of the game and see like several rounds being played, um, check out my friend uh, Tim's channel. His channel is Dad vs. Daughter Playthroughs, Dad v. Daughter Playthroughs. And uh, as you saw at the beginning of my video, um, that was his daughter. Uh, they would love to show you a little bit more about how the gameplay works. That's what their channel is about. They give you playthroughs of the game and you get to see a two-player version of the game. So check out his channel if you want to see more about this game. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.